And the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you could say to this sycamine tree, be rooted up and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Or, dot, 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 Habakkuk. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we give you thanks, not for the grandiose, but for the small and infallible. We give you thanks for the faith which is always sustained and for the love which nothing can take away. We ask that you would give us the power to wrap ourselves around our faith in you. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 It, it was perfect, the question you asked when you came in this morning. Um, Heather came in, and we were talking. There were donuts and coffee. We were talking. She's on her way up to the choir. Left. She said, is Habakkuk even a book? Is that a real book? Is, yeah. is it in ours or is it in the Catholic Bible? We have it. You didn't say that, but I was thinking it. Um, it's towards the end of the Old Testament. Now, it's not a big, fancy one, right? We have Tobit and Nahum and Habakkuk. It's in there. Have you ever taken a chance to look at it besides this morning? It's not on the top ten, is it? So today I'm going to show you Habakkuk. In its entirety, it is the front and back of one page. Three chapters total. And arguably, the third chapter isn't even a reading. It's actually a hymn. Because there's orders at the bottom that it should be played to stringed instruments. Fire, that's next week. How the book's cool. It is one of my favorite books. Because, A, it's short. You can say I read the entire book of the Bible this morning, and people are like, wow! It's like, yeah, it's like three chapters. It was awesome. B, it's about one guy, Habakkuk, a prophet of God, who tells of things that he has seen. Not what's going to come, but things that he has seen and understood. And we don't get that a lot. We don't get people interpreting what they've seen in God. That's what spirituality is, by the way. When you hear that thrown all the way, spirituality is pointing out where God is active in our lives. When somebody can go, hey, that wasn't just chemistry, that was God. They're spiritual. Habakkuk's one of those guys. I'm not very spiritual, believe it or not, but I really am impressed with people who have the gift to find it, like him. C. Yeah, I know that's a three, but I C. It's all about war. What guy doesn't love a good war story? But in it, it's the traditional underdog coming out on top, no hope, last stand, final battle story. And it's only one page each. And Habakkuk talks about how they, they were all lined up against us. And we had no hope. And their spears and their swords shone like the sun. And we were doomed, and we called out to God. And God destroys the enemy and saves them for no good reason. We are lowly, we are meek, we don't really deserve this, but you're, we are your people, and God saves them. It's cool. It's cool because in a shorter time than I just took to explain it to you, Habakkuk instills for all of eternity faith in God to those who read it. Those three chapters, one of the small, one of, not the, one of the smallest things in the Bible, makes it in. Not because of its theology, not because of its works, not because of its grandiose new ideas but simply because it was able to clearly and quietly go, that's God in my life. I trusted in God. I was saved. Growing up, we used to have a fireworks guy that lived about two miles away from us, up in Bethlehem. It was cool until the uh, ATF came and stopped him from selling his fireworks anymore, but that's another sermon. Um, and he used to go up, he lived two doors down from the elementary school. Yeah! The three-car garage filled to the brim. 
And my dad would tell us about it because that's where he got fireworks when he was a kid. And he got the good stuff. Well, we'd go there, oh, once or twice a summer, myself, my neighbor, my cousin Jason. And um, we'd get these fireworks. And you ever played with fireworks as a kid? Back when you were allowed? Yeah. Even when you weren't allowed, you still did it? Yeah, not allowed. Um, remember the big M80s? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You remember the little little snappers that sound like the automatics and boom, boom, they dance all over and they make the, the army men jump up and blow up? And we were playing with those. And my cousin Jason thought it would be fun to go down to the bottom of Grandma's driveway and start blowing stuff up. I thought it was fun too. So we set up G.I. Joes and Army men and these little paper tanks that we made. I know we're boys. They're shaking their We'll never get them. But anyway, we're blowing all this stuff up and it's awesome. We're having a great time. And then we decide to play with them in our hands. Who said it? And there goes your fingers. But we learned something. Yeah. Fortunately, my father came down and stopped us <laughs> before we closed our hands. And he taught us, if you hold even an M80 like this, and your hand flat and light it, it's going to hurt. You're going to burn, but you still have your fingers. But if you even take one of the smallest fireworks you have, you put it in there and you make a fist. You're going to lose your fingers. That's what I want you to take away today from our sermon on faith. We might aspire to have the most, the biggest, and everything and anything. But that doesn't matter. We can have the smallest amount of faith as long as we hold on to it and use it. It is more than enough to do anything. Faith is trust. Trust in God to take care of us. Trust in God to be in our lives. Not doing what we want, but doing what we need. Trusting that God is active every day. Hold on to it. Grip it. When times get bad, hold it harder. Because God never goes away. Just like Habakkuk's book, he's in our lives for eternity. So hold on to your faith. And read Habakkuk. It's short. It's fun. In God's name we pray. Amen.